first of all, let's just get your reaction to the news here. Better late than never, you'll probably say. Uh, well, exactly what was my first line was going to be, and it is very limited, but the help is very much welcome. I've visited a number of businesses across my own constituency over the last few months who are thinking about whether or not they lock the doors rather than continuing to trade because of the astronomical increases in their energy costs. So this will help a little bit, but the key question is who's paying for this? Because if it's just being loaded onto national debt, and that looks if that's what it will be, then you're letting the people who are making extortionate profits out of this crisis off the hook. They should be putting a bit back into the pot to help their fellow businesses right across all the sectors. The government are refusing to introduce a proper windfall tax on the oil and gas uh, sector. So they get to run away with all of those huge excessive profits whilst you, I and our families pay for this for years to come. And we've seen the figures today that interest payments on government debt are the highest in history. Well, you say that you and I are paying for it, but in fact, are those enormous profits not possibly going into the pension funds that you and I probably have? Uh, well, some of it may be, but others are going back to share buybacks. They're uh, going into astronomical uh, profits. I think BP CEO called his own company a cash machine uh, at the moment. And it seems in a time of national crisis that when people are thinking about whether or not they open their businesses uh, over the winter months because they can't afford the energy bills that are coming with it, or whether or not people are making a choice between heating and eating, um, that there has to be a national effort to try and resolve this. And it seems that what is happening here is people are being given support, uh, much needed support, and not at the level as we would like, uh, but they're also being asked to pay for it. They're mortgaging not only their futures, but they will find out on Friday whether or not the domestic energy price cap will actually be mortgaging on people's bills for the next 10 or 20 years. And that surely seems unfair uh, at a time when we need everyone to be working together to help this crisis. OK, so you mentioned the windfall tax on the energy producers, but just as we've been discussing, there are those billing companies as well, of course, in essence, they're receiving a government subsidy. Would you be looking perhaps to get shares in return, job guarantees from those companies? They are going to benefit from a subsidy, essentially. Uh, well, they will uh, benefit, and we would hope that those companies will do the right thing in terms of uh, profit margins and such like, and it would be really uh, wrong of them to be profiting from this massive subsidy. But let's be quite clear here that the problem in the energy sector at the moment is the high, the high wholesale gas and electricity prices that they're having to buy in from. So the key question here is what we do about that, um, and those profits are being driven at the generators of those uh, energies in terms of the oil and gas sector. They the energy companies themselves will have to be incredibly careful because if they do start racking up lots of uh, profit on the basis of a public subsidy, then that will certainly open up the case for windfall taxes on those companies as well. But at this moment in time, we have to do something about those wholesale gas and electricity prices. Right. So we are getting help here. It is indeed matching what we're seeing in Europe as well. But what kind of long term plan are Labour suggesting to get through this? Of course, this scheme for the business sector is running for six months. Uh, well, there's uh, three things that we've been planning ahead for. We've already announced, and our Shadow Chancellor's announced, a £28 billion annual package of green investment, which would mean that we can make more secure, uh, homegrown and cheaper renewable energies in this country. There's a package of increasing and speeding up nuclear. And thirdly, the package is about insulating homes. And indeed, if the government had even considered that package when we announced it last year, maybe two or three million homes would have been insulated properly already, which would be reducing people's bills. So there's got to be... A, a, a real focus on uh, renewables, a real focus on cheaper homegrown energy, and a real focus on making sure that we use less energy by insulating homes, which is the largest uh, carbon producer uh, in the country. So that's the long uh, term plan. But this short term plan has to be to make sure we can get through these winter months and the months following that. And part of the reason we're in this problem, of course, is because Liz Truss, when she was Chief Secretary of the Treasury, signed off closing down all our gas storage. So what we're doing at the moment is selling cheap gas to countries that have gas storage and we'll be buying back it off them extortionate costs in the winter when we require it. And so that's been long term government right. planning that's gone completely but wrong. At the end of the day, is this not more a Vladimir Putin problem than a problem caused by the UK? UK government and Liz Truss. Uh, well, it's partially to do with the war in Ukraine, but this crisis was happening before that. We've had inflation at a 40-year high before um, Putin invaded Ukraine. Of course, the wholesale gas prices have increased 
on the basis of the post-COVID uh, boom in, in, in requirements. Um, and of course, we're way, way behind where we should be in terms of trying to kickstart and making sure we've got our own renewable sources here uh, at home. So these are government decisions that have been made. And what I find extraordinary uh, over the last 18 uh, hours or so when this first broke in terms of what was going to happen with business support from Jacob rees mogg nobody's actually uh, talking about the fact that this minute budget that we're going to have on Friday is only going to take tax levels back to the way they were this time last year and indeed is only cancelling future okay. tax rises and corporation tax. So if we've had 12 years of low growth in this country and we're taking tax rates back to the way they were last year, that's hardly going to give us growth. In fact, it's just going to give us much more of the same that we've seen over the last 12 years. Okay, Ian Murray from Labour, thank you very much for joining us indeed. Thank you.